So there's a lot of competition out there, and after five months, where does the Galaxy S10 Plus stand? Let's find out. So this is my video where I give you my, my long-term review. I do this a lot uh, with certain devices. Galaxy S devices are usually one of them. And I'm taking a look at the Galaxy S10 Plus in five months. Got this device, I got this device from Samsung on February 20th. So when you're watching this, it'll be about five months or even more. And there's a lot to say about this device. There's a lot of hype, there's a hoopla, and there are a lot of things that Samsung did well, and there's some things they haven't done as well. And we'll take a look at some of that over the course of this video. Now, when you're talking about specs, of course the Galaxy S line doesn't falter, and the S10 Plus really packs in everything you, you can expect. Uh, Snapdragon 855 processor from Qualcomm, the best in the land in terms of uh, processors for Android phones. It is blazing fast. It is just so good. Now, your uh, RAM can go up to uh, 12 if you do the ceramic version, but uh, I do have 8 gigs of RAM here. And that provides a very smooth operating system. And that's not just because of the Snapdragon 855, which we'll get to more about that when we talk about gaming, but because of One UI. One UI has changed a lot of the scope for what Samsung has done on this device. And I like that. Um, you know, it's much smoother, no slowdowns. And people will ask, that's the first thing you ask. I've not experienced any kind of slowdowns. Uh, there have been a couple of updates in between that time, but it's been running pretty smooth. I like the reachability aspect of it. I also like the fact that it's got a dark mode, you know, um, something that Android itself is gonna be having officially, I believe, in the next uh, version of Android. It's already here. So I like that it's, it's, uh, it's in this device and it's with One UI. And they've made things just a little bit easier just to access. Just the fact that most options are on the bottom, or it's much better for a lot of people. Now I've got big hands, so for me, it's fine, but it's all show and easier process, right? You know, so I, I like that. Now, um, going back to that processor, Snapdragon 855, um, gaming on this is really good. You guys can check out our gaming videos. We did two. We did a general one, we did a PUBG one. <laughs> you guys will probably laugh at me, of course, as usual. I'm terrible at PUBG or mobile gaming and any shooter on mobile, really. Uh, but that's not the point. The point is it ran really well. The cooling also handled pretty well. Um, you know, the standard 95 degrees um, you know, Fahrenheit in terms of cooling. Uh, but it just is this very smooth process, you know? So, and over the, over the last couple of months, the, it's handled that as well. Now, the, the things I like about the device kind of stems around some of the, my own usability. Um, gaming on here, which I do, you know, from time to time, uh, gives me a very smooth operating. The speakers, which I've started to use more and more. I find myself using the speakers more because they are loud and they are clear. And that's the big thing. You know, you can check out our speaker test. We've done a couple of speaker tests involving the Galaxy S10 Plus. They're, I mean, they hit about 108 decibels. They're also clear and you've got Dolby Atmos built in. So you've got something that's really robust and clean sound. Plus there's a headphone jack. That's something that is missing a lot nowadays. And that headphone jack provides you uh, with a really solid DAC. Now it's not up to the LG G or V50. That quad DAC in there is something supremely entirely and I hopefully I would like to see Samsung include that if you're gonna give me a premium model especially even if I'm going to that 12 gigs of RAM version add something like that in there I think that's just really nice so hopefully we see some of that but I really doubt it um, but you get some really good sound you've got AKG headphones in the tuned headphones in the packaging which is good now Samsung of course introduced the Galaxy Buds and using the Buds with the Galaxy S10 Plus is, is great quick connectivity access, those kind of things work out really well. Now, there's a triple camera setup at the back. I like the camera, I don't love it. I've used, I used to love Samsung cameras a lot because Samsung cameras have taken a slight step back. When I mean slight step, I mean, to me, it's third, you know, after the, uh, the Huawei P30 Pro, the Pixel 3, and then you got the Samsung camera. In terms of video on Android, I think it's the best in terms of video quality. You know, you've got, uh, you've got, you know, the uh, uh, steady video or steady shot, I believe. Not steady shot, steady shot, it's, it's Sony. But you've got, you know, the steady video, which I've got a video that can pay that to the iPhone. You can check that out, I did that a while back. But the fact that you can record video in 1080p uh, that is almost virtually shake-free, especially if you're doing something action-wise and you're thinking, 
Do I do that all the time? No, but if you need to, it's there. And there are cases that that makes a lot of sense. You know, I talked about it previously in other videos. You know, if you're watching your kid play soccer, you're running down the field, or even if you're on a bike in the city or you're in the car and you want to capture something, yeah, it does that pretty well. Now, Samsung has a night mode which they've released. Uh, it's, I haven't gotten that update yet. I believe it's only the Exynos version of, this, of the uh, smartphones have received that. So hopefully that improves photos. Now, photos on devices is, are good. There's, there's nothing wrong with them. Trust me, they're actually good. It's just that other companies are getting better at it. Um, and, you know, images have definitely improved. And again, looking at some of the images here, especially side by side with the uh, OnePlus 7 Pro, which has also got an improvement on their camera. I'm just picking that because that's one of the biggest competitors against the, uh, the Galaxy um, S10 Plus right now, is that you can see how Samsung cameras do, especially with competition coming from somebody that's priced also a little lower uh, than they are. Uh, but the camera is solid. Uh, you know, In terms of low light shots, you can see that comparison there. You see where it stands. I like it. I, I still think the night mode would take this to the next level. Hopefully we see that with the Note 10. Uh, but when it comes to daylight shots, they look really good. Uh, the wide angle lens is the widest of any camera and I do like the Instagram integration into the app. It makes things easier uh, because at least you're getting a better experience than the Instagram camera app itself. Uh, so those things are there. A 4,000 milliamp battery. Now that has given really good battery life. Now I know a lot of people who've talked about that and for me, I'm a super power user, so I drain my batteries for most of my devices a lot. The only device I haven't done that effectively is the Huawei P30 or the Huawei Mate 20. But for me, the battery life has been good. But in this video, I wanted to interject some other opinion other than mine from a good friend of mine, uh, Mr. Danny Winget, and he'll tell you what he thinks about battery and also his own general experience using the uh, Galaxy S10 Plus over, you know, four or five months. What's up everybody, this is Danny. Thank you E for having me and let's talk extended use with the Galaxy S10 Plus. And I don't really say this much about phones, but basically my thoughts when I first got the Galaxy S10 Plus is pretty much the same thoughts that I have now. Using this phone for probably over three months now, it still has remained fairly quick with the Snapdragon 855. I've had no issues with performance. The screen is still incredible. It's actually gotten quite a bit of software updates too in the last three or four months, which is really, really nice. Improvements to the camera, performance, and things like that. But the hardware has held up very well. The camera is still one of the best on the market. And I think that this phone, I could still recommend it even in this mid cycle, especially with some of the price drops that are happening right now, that this is probably still one of the better phones to get. And let's not forget, it still has a headphone jack and it's slim. So don't let other manufacturers tell you they can't put a headphone jack on a slim phone because Samsung did it and it's got wireless charging too. It's got everything that you need. All right, so that's, that's Danny's take and that makes a lot of sense. Um, there's a lot of things I do like about this device. Some things people think it's a little silly. And yes, it is kind of slow, reverse wireless charging. It is faster. It's great for the Galaxy Buds. It's great for a smartwatch. It's not great for charging your phone, but it's great to just give you some juice if you need to. And I think that's where it stands. And hopefully we see an improvement on that. Fast charging is not as fast anymore. And hey, Samsung, you kind of started this craze. You haven't followed up. And I want to see that with your phone, phone feature devices. I want to see at least minimum 25 to 30 watt fast charger. Um, 18 doesn't cut it anymore. And rumors of the notes it was can, can theoretically do up to 100, but it's at 25. At least has me a little bit happier. Um, but I want to see that kind of repair. I also want to see those improvements in the, fast, in, the in the wireless charging as well. I want to see wireless charging uh, take up regular fast charging speeds, just so that it gets a little better. As a device as a whole, I like the usability and feel. Feels very nice and comfortable for me to use. It's not too big for me, my size, that's really good. Design-wise, I will say one of the things that my buddy Mario and Cell, who have done the, the camera, um, uh, professional camera videos with, and definitely check that out on the Galaxy um, S10 Plus, he, he, just to hear his thoughts, is the usability and touch aspects when you hold the phone in your hand, when you grip it like this. Um, you get to, you the edges are just too, too exposed, so you, you tend to, to press a lot on the device. I've noticed that more. 
uh, when you mentioned it. One of the things that I do not like, and I liked initially, so I'm bringing myself back, was the fingerprint sensor on the display. It's ultrasonic, uh, and initially at launch, it worked really well for me. It was very fast, it was fluid, it worked out well. For me now, it's, 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 uh, it's slower. Uh, the updates, I don't know, I think they've kind of messed it up a little bit. And also I've had to record my fingerprints twice just to make sure it works well. So if you, you're looking at this video and you're seeing sometimes it hits, sometimes it doesn't, that's my experience with it. I still like it and I think they have something here, but I, I would like to see ultrasonic being improved. Whether it's from Samsung side or from Qualcomm side, uh, hopefully that gets polished out with the Note and with future updates on this device. But that's one of my biggest gripes, and I think that's pretty much it in terms of what has helped me back on this device. Everything else has been spot on. The camera's been really good. I use the camera a lot. If you check me out on Instagram, you see I tag the Galaxy um, S10 Plus there quite a bit in my cameras, because that's the phone I use. I, that's my number one phone, my A phone. Uh, I'm a Note user, so that might switch to the Note. We'll see what happens. But that's what you see here with this, with this device. Now, I think in terms of moving to the future, what I would like to see change with the Galaxy line, of course, bezel-less. We know, um, you know, we've got uh, the, the hole punch. We've got some really incredible wallpapers, and people have embraced that quite well. But the bezel-less campaign is here, and it looks like, uh, you know, a lot of other manufacturers from OnePlus to Oppo uh, to Xiaomi have shown pop-up cameras work now. Maybe Samsung's looking at it and saying, hey, look, usability. Uh, in terms of long term, uh, we don't want our users to be complaining. So on the, on the new display cameras, like what Oppo has shown, might be the future. Maybe we'll see that with the Galaxy S11. Uh, but right now, I think five months in, I've enjoyed my S10 Plus. Uh, my biggest issue is the fingerprint sensor, but everything else has worked. No slowdowns, some of you asked for that. Uh, battery performance has still been really good. And uh, overall performance has been uh, top notch. And as, a, as an all round device, it's still probably the most well-balanced. Um, so if you have any questions or any comments about this, let me know. Otherwise, guys, don't forget to like and share this video, favorite this video, definitely smash the subscribe button if you haven't already, and hit the notification icon. This is Thunder E saying thank you, and always enjoy your entertainment.